We good? The Planning Commission meeting of February 19th, 2020 will come to order. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary will call roll. Commissioner Tolson. Present. Commissioner Hodge. Here. Commissioner Rice. Here. Vice Chairperson Castleberry. Here. Chairperson Mann. Here. May I have a motion for approval of the agenda? Move to approve the agenda. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Hodge. Second was made by Commissioner Tolson. Unless there's any objections, the agenda stands approved. May I have a motion for approval of the minutes? I have corrections to the minutes. Under my comments, it, only Cabrillo is currently um, developing the project next to the senior center. Many mansions was the former uh, applicant, but they're no longer involved in the development of the project. These are on your your my commissioner, com my commissioner comments. Yes. Okay. Any other amendments to the minutes? May I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Second. No, no, I need a motion I'll first. Approve, I'll approve them. Okay. okay. <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioner Tolson will motion, will motion to approve the minutes as amended. Seconded by Second. Commissioner Rice. <laughs> there we go. If there's no objections, the minutes as amended are approved. By the way, um, kudos to Jen. Outstanding job on the minutes. Yes, yes, yes very good. Declaration of Conflict. The Secretary will read the Declaration of Conflict. If any member of the Planning Commission may have a conflict of interest or any reason why that member must abstain from consideration of any matter on this agenda, he or she should so declare at this time. Are there any declarations of conflict? Hearing none, public statements. This is the time allotted for public statements and comments for all items other than public hearing items. Are there any members in the chamber wishing to be heard under public statements? Okay, they're amassing somewhere, obviously. <laughs> is there any correspondence from the deputy director, city planner? Uh, nothing tonight. Man, we're just going through this, aren't we? Consent calendar. One item on consent calendar. Are there any questions on the consent calendar item. Um, I have a question on uh, item M14 on page 16. And, and the question is, um, it's about the safe routes to school program. I was wondering, does this include um, like uh, curb cutouts and things like that at school sites? Is that included in? Um, staff will have to refer this to um, Public Works. Okay. Is it N14? Um, page 16. It's uh, page 16 and it's M14, correct? M14. Mary 14. Safe for us to school. And repeat your question, I apologize. Uh, the question was, um, would this include um, things like curb cutouts in front of schools? As in curb ramps, crosswalks? Um, cutouts to um, slow traffic. Curb extensions. Um, I believe that's correct, yes. Yes, it would. Okay. Yes. That was my only question. Okay. Thank you. And I would add, you know, the Safe Routes to School program, sometimes communities don't have sidewalks leading to schools, and it's a way to create safe paths of travel. There's sometimes monies that come available for this specific purpose to provide for infill infrastructure where it's missing in the community. Okay. I do have one question on the very first item under background and overview. Um, it says that it is our responsibility as a planning agency to investigate and make, make recommendations to the legislative body regarding reasonable and practical means for implementing the general plan or elements of the general plan. Does this mean that when we do our housing element update, we'll be, there would be a possibility to discuss ways to make sure we're growing to meet our arena numbers each cycle? Yes. Okay. I 
I got something. By all means. Sure. On page 11, ED-3, uh, it talks about the Tourism Alliance. And the very last sentence is, as the TMD expires in June 2019, uh, initiated the process to renew. I think that's been renewed. That is our understanding, yes, and we can make changes to that. Yeah, that was, that was it. Any other questions? We have a motion for approval of the consent calendar. I move to approve the consent calendar. Motion is made by Commissioner Tolson. Castleberry. Uh, sorry, Castleberry. Jeez. I'll get this, sorry. Do I have a second? I'll second. I, 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 we'll get Commissioner Tolson on there somewhere. Yeah. Motion was made by Commissioner Castleberry, and a second was made by Commissioner Tolson. Unless there's any objections, the consent calendar stands approved. I have no continued business. Uh, public hearings, other. We have mobile home rent mediation. Oh, sorry, no, no, number one. Sorry, my apologies. Mm -hmm. 2020 consensus presentation. Consent? <laughs> just census. Oh, census, sorry. Uh, Justine Fisher? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Justine Fisher. I am a partnership specialist with the 2020 U.S. Census. My job with the census is to work with cities, the county, houses of faith, schools, um, community-based organizations to get out the word that we want to have a complete count for the 2020 census. And so we have a very short PowerPoint with some information for you. I've had the privilege of talking with each one of your neighborhood councils um, over the last few weeks. Um, it says tw census 2020 and you, even though um, the city is participating in activities to get everyone counted, we all do have to self respond Bond. And so it is uh, something that is uh, uh, personal as well as things that we are doing for all the areas in which we live. Except that's not working now. Ah, there we go. So the basic information, which I'm sure you well know, is that uh, the census is part of the Constitution, Article 1, Section 2. It's been in the Constitution since 1790. We've had a census every 10 years since then. And it says that we will enumerate or count every single person that resides in the United States and its territories. We currently have five inhabited territories for the United States, so we'll be counting all of the states and those territories in this 2020 census. One of the big reasons for having a census is to have apportionment so we can determine all of our lines, mostly for Congress and where the 435 seats go, but also city governments, county governments, state governments use it for their apportionment um, to determine lines and districts and areas and representation. The federal government has around $675 billion a year or more that they disperse based on population for services. Some of that 50 sheets, 50 things that services are a part of um, that I've given you as a handout talks some of the ways that census data, census money is dispersed and it's based on population counts. So it's definitely necessary to have an accurate account. In 2010, it's estimated that California mis missed counting a million people, 500,000 of which were children. So census data um, is important. Some of the information I've given you talks about that. It really does connect all of the dots. Mostly every government agency uses census data as their premier source of data to make determinations. It not only guides the money, but the statistical data um, and all of the representations of what is happening in the public transform into all the things that we use, direct fundings for service, happens in real estate, happens in transportation, happens for the FAA, happens for FEMA. All of those things are directly related to our population count and what happens in the census. So here's what's happening really quick in less than a month. Um, 
starting about March 12th to March 20th, people who live at an address, so a home, an apartment, a townhouse, or a mobile home that is, receives mail specifically at a location will be asked to self-respond. They're going to get an invitation and it says, hey, please answer the census. If you don't answer the census in the way that, um, it, by that first letter, you get a reminder. If you still haven't responded, you get a postcard. And then after that, you get a pa the paper questionnaire. We'll go over how you're gonna answer in a minute. If you don't answer, by late April, then a census taker comes to your house at least five times to try to reach you. Um, if they can't reach you, they spend some time talking to your neighbors about you to know how many people are living in your house. Hit that. Here's the invitation to respond. I know it's hard to see here, but basically that talks about this is the census, what you need. Everybody has a tract number for the Census Bureau. Um, there'll be a um, information piece that says go on this website, you can respond that way. A phone number, you can respond that way. Wait for the paper questionnaire, or if nothing more, wait for the census taker. This one on the right is just a sample of what the paper questionnaire looks like. So, <clears throat> In 2020, there are multiple ways to respond. You can respond on the internet, fastest way, about nine questions, takes you about 10 minutes. You can phone a friend at the Census Bureau. They will answer the phone. There'll be a dedicated phone line for each one of those um, languages. When you're online, there's a banner at the top and you just click on the language of your preference. That's the most easiest for you to answer in um, so that you can uh, be comfortable with giving your information. If you have an answer by internet or phone, you get a paper form. Um, paper forms are only available in English and Spanish. And again, if you have not done any of those, someone will be coming to your door um, to ask you the nine questions on the census. Answers are protected by law, Title 13 of the US Code. It's required by law that we answer. It is also protected by law. Um, the only information that's given is in statistical format. Every 72 years, census data is released. So if you've ever been on Ancestry.com or any of those other sites, they get census data. The next set of census data from 1950 will be released in 2022. Um, but other than that, it's just statistical data. And the Census Bureau goes through a lot of um, does a lot to protect data that is in its care. All employees are sworn to an oath for a lifetime that they cannot share, reveal census data, and if they do by accident or on purpose, um, they can be fined and spend five years in jail. So this is what the census really asks, no matter how you answer. Your name, your phone number, your age, and date of birth. Um, they ask the age and the date of birth because oddly enough, people write one age and then they write a date of birth and they don't always match. So now they just ask for a date of birth. They ask if you own or rent your home, what your biological sex is, how many people are living at your address, if you're of Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin what your race or ethnicity is, and there's a drop-down menu for that, and you can mark as many as you feel are comfortable um, or how you express yourself, your ethnicity. There is a space to write other down there if something isn't in that drop-down. Oddly enough, the three answers the Census Bureau gets mostly for those are Klingon, Jedi, and Wizard. Um, and then you just be marked as general population. Um, they wanna know how many people are living or staying in the home um, and how they're related to you, whether or not they are a, um, a renter, a friend, a family member, someone in elder care, um, and whether that person lives or stays somewhere else. So if someone is spending time California in the winter, but maybe living somewhere else or in the summer, or if a child has is living in two households, um, the custodial parent um, would answer for the child if the split isn't 50-50, but if not, it would be on where they live on April 1st. So that's a question that they use to check to make sure that it's accurate and hopefully no one's counted more than one time. This is, 
exceptionally important because there are always scams and fraud that do occur no matter what. Um, and so the census never asks for a social security card, a driver's license, any kind of documentation, no passport, bank account, credit card, political affiliation or donation. And this reported suspected fraud number will be on the invitation to respond um, and on the census website. Um, we do know currently that there are a few things that have already been begun um, and that have been checked into saying that you can answer the census early, which you cannot, or giving a fake website. The website isn't, the URL isn't available yet. Um, any of those kinds of things. And so we really encourage the community for people to say, hey, I think something's not accurate here. Um, there will be also a number you can call to see if there is a census worker working in your neighborhood at the time that we have enumerators. Um, I'm not sure if that number is, uh, I think that number is just goes to our Camarillo office and they can confirm whether or not someone is working in Ventura County. Then other questions? Other questions? And before we conclude the presentation, staff want to add additional information regarding the city's um, efforts toward the uh, census. Okay. Please do. So how many Klingons do we have? <laughs> <laughs> they don't actually, they just mark them general population, but wouldn't it be nice to know? <laughs> They don't just list themselves as just general aliens, they actually go for, okay. They have a direction. You can actually learn Klingon online on Duolingo, so we'll see how that plays out in the next hundred years. <laughs> if we have no questions for Justine, you can go ahead and take a seat, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your presentation. Can, can I make Thank a you. quick comment oh, to her? Well, me, Jeff. <clears throat> uh, on March 11th, there is a Simi Valley Interfaith Community Council that you might want to do a presentation to. And then on March 14th, there is a, uh, on a Saturday of the first kickoff week, we have a interfaith uh, unity walk at Lemon Park. Okay. I can get you that information too. That might be set up a table there. That'd be great. And if you could just give it to Eric, I can, he can send it to me. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chen, you're up. Okay. So for the city of Simi Valley, um, our census activity Initially, back in 2017, where um, we first uh, worked on the local update of census addresses operation, and we did receive a grant from the state on behalf of the feds, and we successfully added 900 new addresses to the city's parcel pool. So um, 900 addresses are prim primarily composed of um, um, residency from uh, Westerly and, of course, um, the Woodlands. Um, that's within... Um, uh, within the uh, city limits. And then last year in um, October of 2019, the city, uh, under the city council's direction, we joined the uh, regional collaborative. Uh, it is the Ventura County Census 2020 Complete Count Committee, where we secured $51,000 in grant funding toward our outreach activities, primarily targeting hard to count areas. So our outreach composed primarily of advertisements, you know, flyers, direct mailers, posters, and uh, to, um, again, residents, <clears throat> um, unified school districts, um, Meals on Wheels program, um, mobile home tenants, um, and let's see, the city also purchased 33 ad spaces to install large posters on the city's uh, citywide bus shelters, and including uh, establishing um, census kiosks throughout town. So there's 12 kiosks that's proposed, plus additional nine kiosks that will be funded by the county. Um, so the proposed sites are, of course, the our local government um, areas, um, park, park, um, public libraries, senior center, park district, um, and then, of course, our clubs, YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, businesses, Vallarta, you know, Valley Marketplace, 118 Cafe, and then our faith-based organizations, St. Peter Claver, St. Rose of Lima, Samaritan Center, and there's one more faith-based organization that's under cons uh, consideration. And lastly, of course, our county um, 
um, facilities, a human services, animal services, healthcare agency, and a resource management agency. And that is that. Does anybody have any questions for staff? <clears throat> There's no motion, there's no nothing, we just move on? Just receiving. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on, Mobile Home Rent Mediation Board. Yes. Mr. Chen, you're up again. Hey, well, before the board tonight, is the annual status report for the city's five mobile home parks for calendar year 2019. Uh, this report provides vacancy and rent rate adjustments for each of the mobile home parks. The board received no formal requests for petitions for the rent adjustment within this year. The city has subsidized mobile home rents for 14 seniors in the mobile home parks with the amount of subsidy total $9,826 per, uh, for the year and the amount was reduced by approximately $2,500 due to tenant departures. Uh, lastly, on January 10th, 10th 2020, staff district Your microphone, go. Okay. Okay, so continuing informing our English and Spanish speaking mobile home owners and tenants of the upcoming 2020 census complete count effort and the important information about State Department of um, Housing and Community Development, HCD, regarding the statewide register your mobile home um, California initiative. This program provides financial assistance to mobile home owners such as cost savings toward energy efficiency, utilities, including um, permits, fees, and tax waivers with the State Department. Um, with the State Department. HCD also hosts mobile, um, mobile office events and brings services to the communities in person. This mobile office is currently visiting the Bay Area, so there's nothing scheduled yet for Southern California. However, for more information for future events, please call HCD at 916 838-8613 or visit their website at www.hcd.ca.gov forward slash manufactured dash mobile dash home. Uh, therefore, it is recommended that the Mobile Home Rent Mediation Board by consensus receive this Mobile Home Parks Annual Status Report for 2019 and forward to the City Council. This concludes the report. Are there any questions of Mr. Chen regarding the report? Okay, I have one. Uh, the, the board received a formal petition request that was withdrawn. So do the landlords have to petition if they're raising the rents or they just raise the rents and then the mobile home tenants we file a petition against the, the rental raise as too much. That, that is exactly how it works, right? The rents raised and then the mobile home tenants, they will respond to that. And should, there, should they successfully negotiate, uh, they can potentially um, basically withdraw the application. As in this case here? Correct. Is there a limit that a landlord or a mobile home park can raise the rents by? No, there's no rent cap. There's no rent, um, um, right, there's no rent cap. We don't have any um, rent control. Thank you. I have no further questions. No further questions? That brought up a question for me. Um, so does the state law for rent control that just took effect, um, the 7% plus inflation, does that apply to mobile home parks as well? Do we know? That I do not know. Okay. However, I can look into that. Okay, thank you. I think it's five percent, isn't it? Maybe it's five. Five percent plus, plus CPI. Plus okay, so that's However, where we got seven from. Right. However, we don't know if that's the case for the mobile homes. Okay. Any other questions? Consensus to forward this on to the city council. Okay. Yep. Consensus forward on to city council. Moving on. Item number twelve: oral communication reports. 
Uh, thank you, Chairman Mann. I guess the only uh, item I just wanted to update the Planning Commission on, for those that didn't know, is the City did receive a legal challenge regarding both the Planning Commission and City Council's decision regarding what we call the JM Squared Project. This is the residential care facility that's down by Welcome Court and Cochrane in that area, and the uh, applicants have initiated a uh, the potential for uh, legal action, so we are uh, examining that process. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, otherwise, I think the uh, Commission noted earlier uh, before the meeting started that there is a City Council item on Monday night for the SRO appeal. And so that is a public hearing. And if the uh, a public wants to attend and speak at that, uh, they will be welcome to do so. Um, otherwise, and what's that date? Oh, that's uh, Monday. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I don't even have that in front of me. 29, uh, what, what, what day is Monday? 24th. 24th. Thank you. Thank you. 224. Drew a blank on that. Thank you. No worries. And that's all we have. And Tabla Alamo project goes to oh, the city council on March 9th. March 9th. When is Tapla Street going? The Tapla uh, Street is the Tapla Alamo project that goes to the city council on March 9th. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm SRO. sorry. I was thinking it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got it. That's the SRO. SRO is this Monday night. Got it. Next uh, Monday. February 24th. The SRO is an appeal from the Marketplace Homeowners Association City Council. Correct. And the other one is just the normal forward progress to Correct. the Tapla Alamo. Correct. Got it. Um, any, other, any commissioners have anything? Do any commissioners have anything to report? The one thing that I'll uh, report is that next, in two weeks, myself and Commissioner Tolson are heading to Sacramento for the Planning Commissioner's Academy for this year. So we will be there March 3rd through March 6th. I'm sure you'll make us proud and come back with a whole bunch of information a long lengthy report yes in a short narrative form <laughs> <laughs> and the planning commissioner anything to report uh we've already done the mobile home rent mediation board uh tree advisory board staff no, anything to report nothing tonight do i have a motion for adjournment Reached adjourn. <laughs> okay i'm just going to adjourn <laughs> this concludes the meeting of february 19th 2020 the next meeting march 11th 2020 this meeting is adjourned yeah. Got the gavel there. Hey, that's nice. Hey, Justin.